What is it? Sound occurs when vibrations in an object cause pressure in the air to radiate outward and travel through the air as sound waves. The amount of vibrations per second the sound has, or cycles per second, will determine pitch, and what we also refer to as frequency, measured in hertz. The human ear is designed to pick up frequencies between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz, or kilohertz. And because of the size of our ear canal, which affects the resonant frequency of our ears, we're most sensitive to sounds around 1 kilohertz to 4 kilohertz, which is what we commonly refer to as mid-range or mid-highs. Also happens to be the frequency of a crying baby. Makes sense that our human ears are tuned to that frequency. Speed of sound. Sound through the air always travels at the speed of sound, Mach 1, regardless of frequency, although temperature does affect it. But all sounds, whether it be an 808 kick drum vibrating down at around 40 cycles per second or a hi-hat sizzle up at 7 kilohertz, both arrive at our ears at the same time if they're from the same source. Waveforms and color. In order to understand what makes up a complex sound, we first have to start with the most basic form, a sine wave. The lowest frequency of a waveform is known as the fundamental. The frequencies above the fundamental are known as overtones or partials. When the overtones are numerical integer multiples of the fundamental, they're called harmonics. I'll say that again. When the overtones are numerical integer multiples of the fundamental, they're called harmonics. This is common with most acoustical musical instruments, and it gives the instrument its identity, like DNA. And this tone is what we call timbre. And as we add more sine waves at different amplitudes, basically volume, each starting and stopping at different points, a more complex timbre develops. A sound, like my voice right now, for instance, has its own set of partials that make me sound like me and not you. So now, if you want to open up the top end of an instrument in a more natural and musical way, try using a harmonic enhancer like Waves Vitamin or the Oral Exciter. It synthesizes higher frequency harmonics, and now that you know what harmonics really are, you'll have a better understanding of how and why to use it. So let's talk about physical waveforms. A very low sub bass or 808 kick hits down at around 40 hertz. Sound travels at an average rate of 1130 feet per second. So by dividing 40 cycles per second into 1130 feet, we get 28.25 feet, which is the actual length of the 40 hertz waveform. But why is this important? Because sometimes when you mix it right in front of speakers, you may not be accurately hearing what the bass is doing. But if you take a few steps back, you allow more room for the wave to develop, so the bass now sounds fuller. That's why it's important when you're mixing to take a walk around the room and listen from different vantage points. Other factors that can affect the difference in sound around the room are reflections between two hard parallel surfaces, absorption like bass traps and acoustic panels, and modal frequency. Modal frequency is created when the distance between the walls is a multiple of a sound's wavelength. And when the three dimensions of a room with height and depth all have that same modal frequency, it could be a mess because that frequency will reverberate around the room and sound louder. And that will cause you to mix that frequency lower to compensate. So when planning out a studio room, even in your home, it's important to take dimensions into account. And that includes floor to ceiling as well. So if a 20 hertz waveform is 56 feet long, how big do you think a 20 kilohertz waveform is? You already have all the info you need to figure it out. Now let's talk about frequency, cycles per second, and how that relates to pitch. We're gonna start with a 440 hertz waveform. At 440 cycles per second, it produces a sound with a pitch that we refer to as an A, which has become the general tuning standard for musical pitch, A440. So the New York Philharmonic Orchestra, Eric Clapton, and Skrillex will all be tuned to that note, as are all keyboards, guitars, and other musical instruments. That's the anchor, and if we didn't have a standard, it would be a complete mess. So musical notes are just an easier way to say and write what the frequency is. But frequency and pitch are basically the same thing. A equals 440 hertz, and 261.63 hertz is middle C. You get it. Octaves. 
by doubling the frequency, we're bringing the sound up by what we call an octave. And by cutting the frequency in half, we're bringing the sound down by an octave. So if your speakers only go down to around 90 hertz, like NS10s, there's at least an octave of bass information underneath it that you can't hear, like the subs in your kick and your bass. So you don't know how to mix it. So what do you do? Listen to your mix on other systems that do have a full dynamic range, like maybe a car or a friend system and look at a frequency analyzer and examine the low frequencies and compare it to other songs with the same style. Use visual aids to at least help you out. And when you can, buy some good full range speakers. So how long is a 20 kilohertz waveform? Did you figure it out yet? Equalizers and pitch. So here's an example to illustrate that EQ boost and cut can affect the tuning of an instrument. Here's a simple A of 440 hertz. You can see it on the analyzer. Now watch when I put on the equalizer. I'm boosting a large amount to 285 hertz. You can hear that extra note pop out and actually see it on the analyzer. Now watch what happens as I move up and down the scale. The bad note plays along with every note. Now when I go down and play the D, 293 hertz, you'll hear it overload because that's almost the exact frequency we're boosting, 285 hertz, and it becomes too much or it might just sound out of tune if the frequencies are enharmonic. So learn to recognize that there's a direct relationship between equalization and pitch. They both affect one another in varying degrees of varying times. Pitch is divided into cents as it relates to other notes. 100 cents equals one semitone. 1200 cents equals one octave. So from a C to a C sharp is 100 cents. From a C sharp to a D sharp is 200 cents and all the way up. And in Arabic music, or any music that contains quarter tones in the scale, then it would be 50 cents from the standard notes. Whole tone equals 200 cents, semitone equals 100 cents, quarter tone equals 50 cents. This is vital to know when you're doing any type of pitch adjustment on vocals using auto-tune, melodyne, flex pitch, and others. If auto-tune senses the note C, but it's sung 53 cents sharp, it might take that note up and push it up to a C sharp. So you have to know what the numbers mean. Amplitude. Basically, for all our practical purposes here, it's the volume of the waveform. It's the vertical when looking at waves, how far it goes from the center line. Dynamic range, the difference between the loudest peaks and the lowest audible parts of a recording. Pop music these days, which means all popular music, generally has a more narrow dynamic range than classical music. With the loudness wars, everyone's trying to get their songs out as loud as possible, included. So the soft parts are squashed because everything is pushed up. While in classical music, you have the widest dynamic range because the lowest parts are barely audible and the loud parts can be more fast. Phase. Phase is the position of a point in time on a waveform cycle. If you take a sine wave and add another identical sine wave, the sound becomes twice as loud. But if you delay one of the sounds to the point where one dips when the other peaks 180 degrees apart, the sounds will cancel out. And that's what we call out of phase. And that's also how noise canceling headphones work. The microphone picks up the outside noise, reverses the phase 180 degrees, and plays it back with your audio. The result, the outside noise gets canceled out. If it's more or less than 180 degrees, it can really affect the sound and emphasize or squash other frequencies. But that's how many effects plugins work. That's why it's so important to check your mix in mono. If the stereo bass sounds great, but then when you sum it to mono, it virtually disappears, you have a phase issue on the bass to deal with. Okay, so let's review some of the audio terms and buzzwords I explained today, because now you know what all these mean. And if you forgot something, just watch the video again. Sound waves, sine wave, frequency, resonance, hertz, kilohertz, timbre, frequency, partials, overtones, harmonics, reflection, absorption, modal frequency, dynamic range, phase, out of phase, frequency analyzer, sense, amplitude, octave, and I think that's it. But that's a lot. Bet you didn't realize we covered so much, eh? So how big is that 20 kilohertz waveform? Figured it out? Okay, well, let's go through it. 
Sound travels at 1130 feet per second divided by 20 kilohertz, 20,000 cycles per second, equals 0.565 of a foot. So we multiply 12, 12 inches to a foot, and we get 0.678 of an inch. So it's only about two thirds of an inch. And you have to be young with great hearing in order to hear that. Most people can't hear all the way up to 20 kilohertz. And as we age, a higher frequency hearing starts to roll off. And as the waves get smaller, the pitch gets higher. Dogs and other animals can hear it, but not us humans. So as humans, we can hear waves from 56 feet long to two thirds of an inch. And doesn't that make you feel good to get a visual representation of sound? And I hope you learned a few things that'll open up your mind and help you to make better music. And for more videos on mixing, engineering, music production, music career advice, please check out the rest of our channel and subscribe. Did you hear me? I said subscribe. And please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.